What's up? It's a beautiful day out here in New Hampshire and uh, I was out for a walk and uh, got to get some things off my chest and talk a little bit about free speech. We get a beautiful view out here. So it's becoming a very big issue right now. Uh, free speech is under attack on Facebook, on YouTube, on Google, all over the place. Anyone that has uh, a conservative viewpoint or questions the mainstream media on anything, they get shut down, they get a strike against their YouTube channel, uh, or even shut down. There's many, there's multiple YouTube channels right now that have gotten completely deleted from YouTube. And uh, it's not gonna stop. And, you know, so this is a really important issue that we need to be speaking up about and uh, we need to be spreading the word about. And, um, just show you a little shot over here. Man, that's a beautiful view. While you're at it, make sure you get outside and walk around, okay? Get off the computer and uh, make sure you go out for a walk and get some exercise, get some fresh air, get out in nature and God's creation. It's, uh, it'll really help you to refresh you. But anyways, I got some important stuff I wanna say, so stay with me. All right, so first of all, so YouTube channels are getting deleted. Uh, Facebook, I have friends on Facebook, their posts are getting deleted. It's just getting out of control. It's ridiculous. And you might, you might not be too concerned right now, no matter what you are. If you're a Christian, you're not a Christian, doesn't matter if you're an atheist or whatever you are, uh, you should be concerned about it and we should be, we should be concerned about it and speaking up about it. Because just because, you know, someone that you don't agree with got shut down doesn't mean you're not going to get shut down tomorrow, you know? And that's the whole thing. That's the whole point of free speech. Free speech means you're allowed to say things that people disagree with. You know, you're, you're tolerating someone saying something that you disagree with, that you even think is, is horrible or disgusting or repulsive. It doesn't matter what their viewpoint is, okay? If it's a bad idea, then you debate it in the court of public opinion and debate it out of existence and the truth will prevail. But instead, we have these big media companies and big tech companies, uh, the liberal Silicon Valley um, control freaks that are trying to censor people and shut them down and it's it's getting out of control now and so uh, first thing is I'm gonna let you all know right now I have multiple other platforms that I am transferring my content to uh, my my videos I'm gonna be uploading to uh, a site called bitshoot.com I'm gonna put all these links in the description by the way bitshoot.com dtube I'll probably put on there um, I also have a Minds page, M-I-N-D-S, that's, let's say, Minds.com. That's another uh, social media site, kind of like Facebook, except it's free, open source. You know, uh, they don't censor you, okay? So, some of these platforms, you gotta get on. There's some other ones people talk about, Steam it. You know, get, get on these platforms, spread the word about them, and I'm gonna be putting a lot of my content and my pages over on those places. Um, just to let you all know, so make sure you save all those links if you want to see future videos, future content, keep updated. Uh, you're going to have to go to those sites because I might get shut down, so we'll see. Um, we'll see what happens, all right? So, uh, having said that, let's continue here. So, you know, I've heard a lot of different opinions, too, from Christians when it comes to, excuse me, when it comes to free speech in uh, the First Amendment. And... Some of them are pretty ridiculous, honestly. They're pretty ridiculous with their opinions, and it doesn't make any sense. Um, first of all, there's there's some that are ty the type of uh, tyrannical Protestant or Catholic view who think that anyone of any belief, any different belief, even if, if they're a heretic or something, that should be outlawed. It should be a crime for them to be able to believe anything and to teach it publicly and that those people should they should institute blasphemy laws and these types of things so that anyone that disagrees with them can be punished and thrown in jail or fined and um, it's ridiculous that's how we uh, there was persecution in early America in the 1600s Protestants were persecuting Baptists because they didn't baptize their babies they didn't uh, get a license for church meetings and these types of things and so they'd confiscate their property they'd exile them and all those other types of stuff. That's what that stuff always results in, okay? And uh, you know, and, and that's why, just to give you a little history lesson, this is how we got the Bill of Rights, okay? There was a Baptist preacher named John Leland, 
and John Leland pressured James Madison to put a Bill of Rights in the Constitution or else the Baptists of Orange County wouldn't vote for James Madison. And that was quite a, quite a bit, uh, it's a big group of people and uh, he probably would have lost. So he, he agreed to, to put it in there and uh, which includes the First Amendment with the freedom of religion, freedom of speech, okay? Freedom of the press. And, and you know, so why, why did they want that? Why did those Christians want a Bill of Rights in there? They wanted it so they had the freedom to preach the gospel publicly in their churches, whatever they believed about the Bible. They put it in there so they could write tracts, so they could print books, so they could uh, do whatever they needed to do. And there couldn't be some church state monopoly that told them, hey, we disagree with you. You're getting shut down. You know, that's why it was put there. And um, the government, no matter who was in control of the government, that you could preach the gospel. And by necessity, that would mean that anyone would have the, the, the freedom to say whatever they want. And that's fine, as long as they're not hurting anybody physically, okay? And that brings us to the next point. If you're a Christian, okay, this, this comes to what the Bible teaches about Romans 13. Okay, the right of, uh, what's the role of civil government? Because some Christians say, well, you know, we're Christians and we don't have rights and you're sitting here talking about arguing for your rights and blah, blah, blah. Listen. You have a fundamental misunderstanding of the Bible, okay? Let me give you an instance. Let me, let me give you an example, okay? The Bible says, thou shalt not steal, okay? Now, if the Bible says, thou shalt not steal, what does that imply? That implies that you have private ownership of your property, okay? You have a right to your property, okay? And someone else does not have the right to steal your property, okay? Guess what? That's a right. And they put it in the Constitution that we should have no unlawful searches or seizures. The government can't just come in, search your stuff, and steal it for no reason, okay? Just like it's against the law for anyone to come and steal something from you, okay? But guess what? That's in the Bible, okay? And it says in Romans 13, it mentions the second table of the law. It says, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt uh, not bear false witness. These are talking about crimes between neighbor against neighbor. But Romans 13 doesn't mention the first table of the law, the commandments about, thou shalt have no other gods before me, thou shalt not make it to the any graven image, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Why? Because it has to do with belief in God. Okay? And you can't force people to believe in God or to believe your particular doctrinal view of God. Okay? You can't do that. Because people then people will outwardly conform just so they're not obeying the laws. So they don't have to go to jail. But inwardly in their hearts, they're rebelling against it. The only way for people to truly believe is if they're born again. They have to repent of their sin and put their faith in Jesus Christ and have their heart transformed. Then they'll believe. Then they'll be saved. Then they'll preach the gospel. Then they'll, they'll want to obey the word of God. But you can't force them. Okay, I'm not saying we shouldn't have laws. I said we should have laws about not stealing, perjury, not murdering, all these other things. Those should be laws. What I'm talking about is you can't legislate beliefs and speech. You can't restrict what someone can say and what someone can believe. That is not something that you can make law, a law for, and that is not what the Bible says is in the sphere of the authority for civil governments, okay? And anyone that calls himself a Christian trying to say that, you're wrong. And that always throughout history has resulted in persecution, whether it was from Augustine, Thomas Aquinas, the Protestants in early America, it always results in persecution. And we don't want that, okay? No matter who's doing the persecuting. We don't want that to happen, okay? So as Christians, you should support free speech, okay? And if you're an atheist, a Satanist, it doesn't matter what you are, you should support the right of Christians to have free speech because eventually they'll come for you. They're already coming after. I've seen they've come after atheist channels and other types of people. Uh, you know, they've come after uh, that guy, the psychologist, Jordan Peterson. You know, they, they come, they're coming after anyone that goes against this liberal, crazy, leftist SJW uh, narrative, they're, they're freaking out. They're trying to shut them down. They're trying to shut them down in universities. And now these tech companies from Silicon Valley 
are trying to shut everyone down. Okay, we have to fight against this. We have to speak out against this. Okay, and as Christians, you have to be active in speaking out against it. Okay, some of you out there think the only thing I do is preach the gospel and that's the only thing that matters. Yeah, that is important. Absolutely, that's important. Glorifying Jesus is the most important thing. But you know what? There's a ton of other things that the Bible teaches. Okay, tons of other things in the New Testament. Okay, abstain from all appearance of evil. There you go. Is that preaching the gospel? No, it's another commandment though. It's just, it's just as valid as any other commandment in the Bible that should be obeyed. The Bible says to mark and avoid false teachers. That's another commandment. You know, there's a bunch of different commandments in the New Testament we need to be following. And one of those is, is, is standing up for the truth and, and fighting for our ability to be able to speak the truth. Because if you don't fight against that, it's gonna go away. If you don't, if you give no resistance to it, it's just going to go away. And then what? Then it's going to be a lot harder for you to preach the gospel. Okay? And to teach the word of God and say things that are politically incorrect. You got to wake up and get involved in the fight. All right? It's just, I'm sick and tired of seeing Christians sitting on the sidelines and not caring and caring about anything, not getting involved and just sitting on the sidelines, watching the world go by and say, well, oh, look at Jesus is going to return soon. Look at the signs that are coming. And then you just sit there and do nothing? You know what Jesus is going to say? Remember the, remember the par parable of the talents? He came to the slothful servant. He said, oh, I gave you one talent. What would you do with it? Well, you know, Lord, I, I kept it hidden here in this napkin and I buried it. And he's like, you didn't do anything with it. I gave you this. I only gave you one talent and you did nothing with it. You think God's going to be happy about that? No, you know what he says? He says, occupy till I come. Okay? And, um, yeah, we shouldn't be conformed to this world. We shouldn't be worldly, but we can't completely, you know, isolate ourselves from the world like we're Amish or uh, some Catholic monk or Buddhist monk in, in, uh, in the Himalayas or something. Okay? We got to be involved, being a light to this world, not hiding our light under a bushel. That's all we're supposed to do. Okay, so stand up and speak the truth. And um, I think that's it. I think that's what I, all I wanted to say about free speech, First Amendment, all that type of stuff, role of the civil government in the First Amendment. Christians, okay, you got to stand up. You got to speak out against this. And and make sure you're, you're signing up for these other platforms. Let's spread this out here. Let's support other mediums. Let's support other people who are starting other media outlets and stuff like that. We got to take away some of their power. They have a monopoly on these on these platforms and the mainstream media and these and these social media companies. They're just going for a big power grab, full court press. Okay, so please, it's time to stand up right now, and uh, so we can have some more time to to speak the truth. All right, all right. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, for now, please like, share, subscribe, comment as much as you can. Uh, fight against the shadow banning. What is Twitter's tactic when it comes to censorship? To find out, we spoke with former Twitter software engineer, Abinoff Vodrevu. One strategy is to shadow ban so that you have ultimate control. The idea of a shadow ban is that you ban someone, but they don't know they've been banned because they keep posting, but no one sees their content. So they just think that no one's engaging with their content when in reality no one's seeing it. Shadow banning is a way of blocking users from a social media platform without notifying them. Tweets from a shadow banned user still appear to their followers, but don't show up in search results or anywhere else on Twitter. It's an effective way of deterring Nigerian scammers and other online fraudsters. But if abused, shadow banning is dangerous. You just sort of turn off all of the features for them, so like, they still see everything, it's all there. You can like it, you can favorite it, or you can like retweet or whatever, but uh, at the end of the day, no one else interacts with your, no one else sees what you're doing. So, uh, all that data is just thrown away. Uh, it's risky though. So, if you could share videos on other platforms, that helps to physically paste the link somewhere because it, it, sometimes th these videos, they're, now they're disappearing from suggested videos and other forms of traffic, they're suppressing them. Okay, it's shadow banning. So please help with that as well.
Uh, but as far as long as I can, I'm going to continue to make new videos, including uh, longer studies. I'm going to I have some of the works in the pipeline to do some some more of those. So stay tuned for that. And uh, thanks for watching. God bless you. Have a good day.